brought this with me, I might as well use it. I wanted to establish some goals for today so that as we're doing this, we kind of get some sense of why we're doing it, or at least why I'm doing it. How the reason that you choose may be totally different. But uh, we're, we're analyzing Lion King, okay? So basically, what I feel that our goals are, are to test our structural theory against the familiar screenplay, which is to say we know certain things are supposed to be in certain places for certain reasons. Well, let's look at something very popular like Lion King uh, and, and see if it fits the template, so to speak. So in this case, our template, let's just say, is the typical diagram like this where you have the beginning, the middle, and the end. And furthermore, we define this area as Act 1, this area is Act 3, and this one is Act 2. Act 2. Right. And, and then we further define plot point that occurs right here that brings us to Act 2 from Act 1. And a plot point that occurs right here that brings us from Act 2 to Act 3. So there's a lot of different things that structurally we expect to see in just about any screenplay. And we're going to go through the Lion King to see, to see if, it, if it fits in there. Uh, we also want to test and practice our knowledge of screenplay structure. So in going through this exercise, we're reinforcing our own knowledge. And so when, we, when it comes time for us to write, we make sure that we kind of write in that same pattern. To, pre, uh, to uh, practice analysis of a screenplay in anticipation of self-analysis. Here again, if you're going to write a screenplay with the knowledge of a certain structure, after you have wrote the first, um, first draft, then go back and see if it fits the structure. So you're doing a self-analysis. But to get to the point where you're qualified to do your own self-analysis, you've got to go and analyze other people's stuff. And if it doesn't make sense, you've got to figure out why it doesn't make sense. And try to understand the structure before you come back to yourself and say, OK, now I understand. Let me look at my stuff and see if it fits, see if it works. And structure is really important. Uh, I don't write to structure. I write to my movie in my head, and the movie in my head just happens to fit structure by some, by some chance. I'm fortunate in that. Uh, to learn about screenplay structure, the, per to the people who aren't familiar with this will become familiar with this as we go through it. Okay, so this, this whole area here, I'm going to be writing concerning the structure of the Lion King. Up here, we're going to be talking about the characters. Okay, so we're going to be. Uh, talking about what, what our characters' goals are, what motivates them, and what oppositions uh, do we have, do, does each character have. A character without a goal is not a character worth watching, right? Put somebody up on the screen, and he goes through the motions of something, or what are his goals? Why am I watching him? What is it that I'm anticipating that he does, right? What is it that I'm looking forward to? If he's got no goals, maybe nothing. Um, opposition. It's easy to get to your goals if there's no opposition. So we create opposition specifically for that reason, to add the tension, to add the excitement uh, uh, as the character is achieving the goals. And then finally, motivation. You've got goals, but you've got to, re you've got to understand the reason why you have those goals. And we have to understand the reason why, because when it comes time for our characters to take life, if our characters don't have motivation, if they're not motivated toward these goals, it's going to make us very difficult to write any kind of plot. Okay, I want to be, uh, I want to be a famous musician. Okay, well, why do I want to be a famous musician? Is it for the money? Is it for the prestige? Is it because I love music? But then why do I want to be a famous musician? So as you build up this motivation, uh, you build, you're building up your character as well. As you define goals, opposition, and motivation, you are giving them something to do. Some of the hardest parts are going to occur in Act 2 when you've got to give them something to do. Right? You know how it begins. You know how it ends. You kind of know what goes on in the middle. but 
somehow after you've written your 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 feature and it's 50 pages long, you say, well, now what? Okay, because you haven't given them enough to do. Perhaps because you haven't given them something to block their way so they can go around it, which takes longer than 50 pages. Uh, or you haven't given them the motivation. Uh, to, to get to their goal. And so they maybe they get to it too easily or maybe by a different direction. So we're going to be working on the Lion King. And I know that we have a limited number of copies, but that's okay. Because if we had to go through the Lion King front to back, it would take us far more than an hour. We already only have 45 minutes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap into our own memories. <clears throat> and we're going to fill out some of this information now before we even look at the script, just based on what we know from the movie. Now, in this case, The Lion King, I believe, was written in anticipation of the movie. It even has the lyrics to the song. So if you have time, we'll do a sing-along. <laughs> uh, so we can pretty much assume that what we see in the script is what wound up on the screen. Pretty much so, all right? So let's, let's just think about the last time we saw Lion King, if you saw it more than once. <laughs> And let's see if we can figure out the, the, the main beats of it. In other words, what important thing happens, then what important thing happens, then what important thing happens. So, does anyone remember how it starts? It starts with the birth. The baby. The animals are gathering, yeah. The animals are gathering, <coughs> and then after this whole big thing where you see all the animals of the, of, of the forest, or of the, 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 plains. the plains, they lift up the baby in the air, okay? And that's our protagonist. That's Simba. All right. So from page one, right off the bat, we have uh, what I call establishing the world. Okay. And this is not something that you always see uh, in screenplays, and it's not something that you always see in the screenplay books. Establishing the world. But you want to get them from page one. You want to hook the reader and hook the audience from page <coughs> one. And you can't really do it by jumping right into the plot. Because as we know, the real meat of the plot doesn't happen until the end of act one. Not page one, but the end of act one. So what do we do on page one to hook them? What we do is we create a world that's very interesting to watch. Okay. Uh, so from page one, they establish the world and establishing in world. Establishing world and meet protagonist. Very often, protagonist. I'll spend 45 minutes just checking my own spelling. <coughs> Very often the protagonist is like immediately on page one, that's the person you'll see, and of course that's the person who you'll follow through most of the story. Less often you meet the protagonist somewhere into the story. That's certainly possible, right? Uh, but that usually they try to get this, this person out like right away in the first scene, okay? So, so we, 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 meet, we meet the protagonist and we establish this world. Um, do we remember what happens after that? It doesn't have to be directly after. What significant event happens after that? The two little cubs are playing. He made his, his girlfriend. Two little cubs are playing. <laughs> Simba and uh, Nala. Nala, right? Yep. And that's where he sings, I just can't wait to be king. <laughs> right? So at some page, Simba and Nayla play. And I'm going to insert sings here because I want to come up to here. Okay? At this point in time, what's Simba's goal? To grow King. up. Just. I don't know, I'm not even sure his goal is to grow up, but to let's assume it is. Yeah. Because you know, when you're that young, you don't really think in terms of, oh, I have to wait till I grow up to do this. It's like I just want to do it now. <laughs> so grow up to be king. That's the key, though. He wants to be king. That's his goal. 